If you've been watching this channel for a while, it's a good bet that you grew up reading the Chronicles of Narnia. But Narnia's blatant Christian imagery has been a problem for a few authors, which has inspired a lot of fantasy writing, both critiquing that and responding to the critiques. Some of them are good, some of them not so much. <laughs> Welcome to the Book Cafe, where we talk fiction, fantasy, and review books. Today we're going to be talking about a rather controversial work that's on the low end of the quality scale, but very near and dear to my heart, G.P. Taylor's Wormwood. How this relates to Narnia is complicated. As I said during the cold open, Narnia is very laden with Christian imagery. And for those of you who are familiar with Philip, with Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials, or as it's more commonly known, The Golden Compass, it was written as a reaction to Christian imagery in fantasy fiction, which you can kind of see as, a, as an anti-Narnia, in a way. G.P. Taylor did not like that, so he wrote his first novel, Shadowmancer, as a response to Pullman, as a, a, an anti-atheist fantasy novel, in a way. So the question is, did he do a good job? And the answer is maybe. Wormwood is technically a sequel to Shadowmancer, in that the events that occur during the climax of Shadowmancer are what kick off the plot of Wormwood. However, the books only have one character in common, and he doesn't show up until the third act of Wormwood. So it's possible to read Wormwood without knowing that Shadowmancer exists and getting along perfectly fine, which is exactly what I did. Uh, the book starts in London when a series of apocalyptic signs run through the city, and suddenly the world stops spinning and the night turns into day. There's only one person in the city who is not surprised, a Dr. Sabian Blake, who about a week before this event uh, got his hands on a legendary book that's said to predict the future, but also bring doom to everyone who possesses it. The book also predicts that within the next few weeks, the comet Wormwood is going to come down to Earth, poison the seas, and kill everyone. Blake is the only person who knows about it, the only person who can stop it, and possibly the worst person possible to do so. You know, because he's much more interested in seeing the results than in stopping them. Meanwhile, his housekeeper, a Jedalanian, is hiding a fallen angel in her attic, who came to Earth to prevent the end of the world, until Lamian's father ripped off his wings. Wormwood is, in a lot of ways, very bleak. The signs of the apocalypse never get corrected. One, one of the big mood settings of the book is that once the day-night cycle has been skewed at the beginning, it doesn't get fixed. It stays wrong for the entire rest of the novel, and so the clocks will chime midnight where the sun says it's four in the afternoon. That sense of creeping wrongness never quite goes away. It's repeatedly noted that the vast majority of the dogs and the horses in London ran away right before the earth stopped, and none of them have come back. You get the feeling that London is not quite a ghost town, but it's limping in ways that it really shouldn't be. Taylor does a great job of having the characters evolve uh, from selfish and broken anti-heroes into the kind of people who are actually willing to stop the end of the world. Watching Blake struggle with and then overcome temptation is a really well put together character arc. The plot is interesting. I absolutely loved the villainess. You can clearly see there's something wrong with her. You can clearly see she's not a good person, but she's an excellent tempter, and she is very good at dangling desires in front of people in a way that makes them want to take it. And it's never quite explained what she is, which gives her this aura of mystery, which I felt lent a lot to her character as a villainess. The writing is fast and fun, but... It's very chewing gum kind of writing. For an example of what I mean, think about the Twilight series. Disregarding everything about the plot and the characters in Twilight, the writing in the series is a particular style that doesn't require a lot of thought, but at the same time doesn't have a lot of depth to it. Wormwood is very much the same way. The writing is really easy to read, really fast, but it feels shallow. The place in this book is kind of difficult. The language that's used and the syntax feels like it's written for children, but the plot and the characters are definitely more on the adult side. 
It's a very bleak, very dark book. Despite its lineage, it's very much not the Chronicles of Narnia, where Narnia focused on heroics and Aslan and the triumph of good. Wormwood is very concerned with the issue of evil, of sin and temptation. You get the idea that Taylor's particular brand of Christianity is not one of the nicer ones. When the second angel shows up, he mentions that he's a warrior and is carrying around a handful of grenades. That's the kind of thing we're dealing with here. So figuring out an audience for this book is a little difficult, but that's not to say there shouldn't be one. I don't think this is a particularly good book, but I thoroughly enjoyed it anyway. It's sort of like watching the Green Lantern movie. You know it's not great, but it's still enjoyable. I would give this book a buy it used. Now, I've never heard of Wormwood outside of explicitly looking for it, but if any of you have read it, let me know what you thought. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? What's your thoughts in the comments section? If you enjoyed this video, be sure to click on the like button. Click here on the dragon to subscribe and here for more videos like this from the Book Cafe. I've already chosen the next book for Sunday. It's by an author we've already reviewed a couple of times. So if you have any guesses, be sure to either comment on the video or tag me in your Twitter feeds. Anyone who gets it right is going to get a mention in the next video. So I will see you all Sunday, and until then, read good fantasy.